Elden Ring is the latest game by From Software, the makers of Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro. One of the most acclaimed developers of the last decade are teaming up with George R. R. Martin to create what many would consider a dream game, a spiritual successor to Dark Souls, evolved and expanded in an open world format. To say Elden Ring is highly anticipated would be an understatement. The excitement for this game is overwhelming and have been driving people mad for almost three years now. With From Software finally unveiling the game to the public with great reception, many people from outside of the fanbase are considering taking the plunge on February 25th. There is only one issue. The Souls games are hard. As much as the challenging aspect of these games has been the selling point for the fans, it has also been a major wall for many people to get into the series. This duality has sparked innumerable heated discussions around the topic, but I am not here today to have the whole difficulty debate. I am here to tell you how to get good. Hello everyone, I am Cosmos, and today I will share with you 11 guidelines that will make anyone who follow them a god at Souls games. So, if you have been considering playing Elden Ring, or you are simply looking to improve your gameplay experience, this video is for you. But before we begin, we have to ask, what exactly does it mean to get good? How do you define getting good? At what level of mastery do people become officially gotten good? Well, for the purpose of this video, I define getting good as the ability to comfortably, naturally and effectively overcome any challenge these games will throw at you. It doesn't mean that you will instantly one-shot every boss, nor will you never struggle again. But what I promise you is that you will be able to finally appreciate these games for the amazing things they do, unbothered by their difficulty. And do not misunderstand, it will not be easy at first. In fact, if you want the easiest way through these games, you can search most OP build on YouTube for example. You will find none of that here. But if you are willing and if you are looking for a more permanent solution, then stick around and let's get started. The way this is gonna work is that we are gonna be looking back at things me and other veteran players eventually acquired that made the biggest difference in how well you do in Souls games and distilled them into 11 guidelines for you to follow. This will not be about specific in-game techniques or mechanics, but more about general abstract skills or requirements that will universally be the key to success, regardless of the situation. People differ greatly and things that might come naturally to you will be trickier for others and vice versa. So as we go on, I will also try to demonstrate the importance of a guideline, as well as give you tips on how to stick to it if it's harder for you to get a hold on. To do well in Souls games, there is a variety of skills and approaches that will make the biggest difference in practice. These can be categorized in three main groups. First comes mechanical skill and proficiency. This include things like sense of timing, reflexes, or simply how well you can execute intended inputs on your controller. Yet, unlike what many people assume, this is undoubtedly the least important aspect of what makes a good player. I would even argue that you could be good at these games with grand mal level of mechanical skills with only the next two categories. Second is game knowledge. Everything you know about the game. The game systems, what each spell or weapon does, enemy weaknesses, boss movesets, how stats affect your damage or defense, or simply where to find desirable items. And lastly comes the mental aspects. This is perhaps the most important category. This is the area that comes first and foremost in your quest to getting better at the game. And so it goes. First mental aspects, then game knowledge, and finally mechanical skills. I will be touching on all of those things, though it is important to note that it is necessary to focus on the mental and game knowledge categories in order to create a framework of constant and steady improvement that will implicitly help the development of your mechanical skills through experience and practice. Number 1. Stay calm and composed. It is no surprise that in any game, getting upset and tilted is gonna make you play much worse. Your decision making will suffer and thus your performance. Souls games are notorious for making people mad. But in order to improve, you will need to come into this with a level of zen. It does not matter if you have to rant or scream or do whatever it takes to vent after you died. What matters is that the next time you walk into that boss fight, you let go of all of that and you are composed and ready to tackle the challenge before you. In a similar vein, never let panic take over you. For example, you will find yourself in situations where you are cornered, enemies are attacking you, and the camera decided to go on a vacation. It is very easy in those situations to start panicking 
and either spam rolls or attacks. This will usually spell the death of the player. However, those situations are not nearly as deadly if you can catch a hold of yourself. Simply being calm and not panicking is going to allow you to take proper actions, time your dodges and attacks properly, and survive whatever predicament you found yourself in. All in all, in Souls Combat, your greatest enemy is going to be yourself. The combat itself is rather slow and methodical, compared to other games at least, and as such, timing and decision making will reign supreme. Both of those will require you to have a clear mind to properly execute. Number 2. Do not let the game intimidate you. This is a peculiar one, and it doesn't concern everyone. But I have seen quite a few people having more trouble than they should because they find themselves playing way too cautiously, like they are afraid to even get close and attack. Do not let the game slash boss scare you or intimidate you. There is nothing wrong with playing more carefully when the stakes are higher, however one must be careful not to confuse caution with fear. Letting yourself get intimidated by the game will not only make you play more passively where being aggressive is preferable, it will generally make you hesitate during combat. And as we know, in the context of fighting a boss for example, being too afraid to take advantage of an opening is certainly not as bad as getting greedy and attacking when you should not, but it still plays against you. The more the fight drags out, the more you are prone to make mistakes, and either die or run out of healings. If you let the enemy set the pace of the combat, you will be in trouble. So relax the tension, and don't be afraid to be aggressive when you can. Number 3. Acceptance of loss and death if the two previous points were about how your mental can affect your performance, this one is more about the mindset with which you should approach the challenge. Getting good is a process. It's a method that prompts learning and constant improvement. And during that process, you will suffer losses. You will die, you will lose your souls, and sometimes you will waste important resources. But if you let the frustration get to you, it will only drag you down. So do not hesitate to take breaks if you need to, do not engage a boss without already expecting that he will take you however long it will take you for you to beat him. Do not take actions with risks if you are not willing to bear the consequences. If you feel like going forward would be too dangerous, then go back, spend your souls, and come back without having to risk losing them. And if you decide to press on because you ain't no bitch, then sure, go for it. Just don't get upset if you eat shit and die. Number 4. Do not rely on gimmicks and crutches. As I previously mentioned, this guide is not about the fastest or easiest way to get through the Souls games. There is plenty of those guides out there, and what they do is present you with an established method or build that will trivialize going through the game with minimal engagement from the player. But this is not what this guide is about. To become good requires you to properly engage with what's presented to you in-game. It also requires that you are able to demonstrate consistency. This is why you cannot properly learn a fight if you used a crutch to get through it. What I define as a crutch is anything you cannot consistently and systematically rely on. This includes things like consumables, online co-op, or even that overpowered one-shot build you found online. Now mind you, I am not saying using X or Y build is not okay because it's too strong or too easy to use. Use whatever build you want, regardless of its objective performance. And if your build just so happens to naturally trivialize the game, then I have a solution for you later in the video. As a general rule, if something can get you through a wall, but you would then be unable to get through the same wall again without it, then it is a crutch, and relying on it will spoil your growth. Number 5. Understand core mechanics and apply them when relevant. Understanding the core mechanics of combat is fundamental. You need to take time to engage with them. Things like iframes, enemy stances, guard breaks, backstabs, etc. However, beyond just knowing about these systems, it is even more important to use them when it is relevant. One of the biggest things I notice many new players do is only use half the options available to them during combat. And as you would expect, that greatly decreases their effectiveness. And perhaps worse, is when you overly rely on a singular mechanic, basing your whole gameplay around it. Doing that is doing you a great disservice. Not only do the developers design enemies more and more to punish that kind of playstyle, you also will find yourself completely incapacitated against enemies that are either immune or not really doable in that specific way. You have at your disposal an array of systems, and enemies are designed to be weaker to some things and stronger to others. And even against the same enemy, 
there is an intended appropriate answer for some actions. Being proficient at all the core Souls combat mechanics and perceptive to when to use them is gonna make a massive difference in how well you play. Explaining all the combat mechanics for Elden Ring would be out of scope for this video and would take too much time. However, I am considering making a separate video, so let me know in the comments if that's something that would actually interest you. Number 6. Each death needs to be a learning experience. In a game series where one of the titles is prepared to die, we all know we are going to be dying a lot. But what makes the biggest difference between an average player and a good player is how much you can learn from that death. One of the singular things you can do while playing these games that will yield the most significant and immediate result is to simply look back at how you died and why you died, and take note of what to change the next time you encounter what killed you. Of course, this sounds tiresome and you don't have to do this every time. So when learning a boss, for example, be efficient in your growth. Do not keep doing the same thing over and over again. If something doesn't work, change it. If an attack keeps hitting you, change the way you respond to it. Repeating the same action, banging your head against the wall, over and over and over again, expecting a different result, is... Number 7. Do not be afraid to look for help. The Souls games have a reputation of being obtuse and impenetrable. Though in my opinion that can be blown way out of proportion, there is a reason why they can be perceived that way. From software's game design language, or so to speak, can feel alien to most players who are not used to it. And so, a new player is not equipped with the tools to understand how the systems work. And believe me, these systems can raise eyebrows. This is why I highly encourage new players to look up information on how things work. Many players will swear by the sanctity of the blind first playthrough and I understand where they are coming from. But in my perspective, it is highly beneficial for new player retention if they get an explanation on how some things work. Things like combat mechanics, weapon scaling and stat and stat requirements, encumbrance, among many other things. Understanding those will make their first playthrough smoother without compromising their experience. So anyways, do not be afraid to look up help on things you don't understand. Though, I would like to stress that you avoid straight up spoilers or guides on how to defeat certain enemies or bosses, as those can be more harmful than helpful 90% of the time. And just as everything we are trying to do here, let this be in a politic of learning. So when you look up something, it's not just to get the information, as I don't want you to always rely on looking up things, but rather absorb the logic of how it works so you can figure it out yourself next time. You know, teach a man how to fish or whatever, only you are teaching yourself or something. Number 8. Challenge yourself. Okay now, so what if you are a Giga Chat? Maybe your build is just too strong. Or maybe this amazing video awakens something in you. In order to constantly promote growth and self-improvement, if you feel like the game is getting too easy or too simple, I highly, highly encourage you to start purposefully challenging yourself. There are many ways you can do this organically. Maybe take more risks. Try to go for tighter openings during combat, or maybe push a little harder in your exploration next time. A fun thing I like to do nowadays is when I fight a boss, I try to go for a fight that looks fun to watch, almost like it's something choreographed. You would be surprised how much harder it is to pull off than just killing the boss. Anyways, it is important that you adjust the challenge organically when things get easier on you to keep getting better. If your growth curve outpaces the game's difficulty curve, you will naturally stop improving, and we don't want that. Number 9. Be observant and take in environmental clues to organically feed your game knowledge. Though I encourage you to seek help for things you don't really understand and build your game knowledge that way, you eventually need to start developing that knowledge organically and figure things out on your own through the game. To do that, you need to be thorough. Read your item descriptions, listen to NPC dialogues, and don't skip tutorials for the love of God. Take in environmental clues. Anything that is hidden by the developers have some sort of hint, so make sure to look around. You would be surprised how often people never pan their camera upwards. If you see an item and the path that looks accessible but you never found a way to it while playing through the level, that might be your cue that you missed something or that there is a hidden wall somewhere. Another advantage of feeding your game knowledge yourself beside not being reliant on guides or someone else to tell you what you missed, is that you also get to partake in deepest lore. 
Yes, you could go to YouTube and watch Vari's latest video, but doing it yourself is beyond worth it. It's like the difference between having a fancy homemade dinner and going to McDonald's. No shades, Vari, I love you. Number 10. Know your fundamental combat resources. Some of the things that are the most important to know are your weapon moveset. R1, R2s, charge R2s, jumping attacks, running attacks, rolling attacks, and all of that in two-handed form. It may sound like a lot, but believe me, it's really not. As a general rule, you want to know how you swing your weapon. If it's a thrust, it's going to be good at outranging your opponent and doing good damage. If it's a swipe or an arc, then it's ideal to deal with enemy groups. Two-handing is going to be better against shields, to break enemy posture, and generally will have better DPS. Also get used to the range of your attacks so you avoid whiffing, and to their speed so you don't get caught mid-swing. Next is stamina management. It is probably the most important aspect of Souls combat. Always keep track of your stamina. Naturally create downtime to let it regen, and never ever just keep spamming R1. Also, avoid swinging if it's gonna give you negative stamina. For those who don't know, if you swing while your stamina is at 10 for example, and your swing is gonna consume 40 stamina points let's say, you won't just have 0 stamina. You will be at negative 30, and you will need time to regen back to positive before you can do any other action. So either don't swing if you are low on stamina, or do it if you know you will have enough time to regen back to positive before the enemy attacks again. Especially if you play with a shield, stamina management becomes your main issue. It's your bread and butter during combat. As if you run out of stamina while blocking, you will be guard broken, opening you up for massive damage from the enemy. Stamina management is huge, and there is no way I can detail it all here. Just make it something that you constantly work on and be more efficient at using as a resource. So always make sure to keep an eye on your stamina during combat. Finally, learn to dodge properly. Yeah, but for real though, learn to time your dodges properly even if it's by trial and error. When it comes to dodging, there are a few subtleties to it. Too much to cover here, but here are the main important things. First is your timing. Don't dodge the wind up of an attack, dodge the actual attack at the last second. Many bosses are gonna be baiting you with delays and slow wind-ups in order to mess with your timing. This is why I insisted so much on being calm during combat in the beginning of this video, as it's the most effective way to deal with that. Second is the direction you are dodging. For the same attack, there might be a bad direction to dodge, an okay direction to dodge, and an ideal direction to dodge. Dodging the wrong way will get you hit most of the time and might require perfect timing to avoid. Dodging the okay direction will work most of the time but will put you in a suboptimal position let's say to retaliate or to dodge the next move. Dodging the best direction is either the one that gives you the most leeway in your timing or puts you in an ideal position for what's to follow. All in all, it would be interesting to do a dodging 101 in Souls games as there are general rules that are shared between all of them. Other than learning your weapons moveset, learning how to dodge and improving your stamina management, you can practice landing backstabs as they can be a bit tricky if you are not used to them, and maybe even parrying if you are feeling courageous. Number 11. Do passive observation runs. If you applied everything up until now, there is no doubt in my mind that you are on track to become a god at these games. However, that doesn't mean that you will never struggle with a boss or enemy ever again. This is the last guideline. And it's rather an extremely powerful hack in a way that will systematically help you take apart any encounter way faster. So be sure to use it if you are really struggling with a boss. So one of the most powerful things you can do in these games is passive observation runs as I call them. In these runs, you will go face the boss without the intention of beating him, but simply observing him. If you remain calm and are comfortable around the boss, it will be very easy to just walk around him, focusing only on dodging and blocking his attacks. Little by little, you will start to catalog every move the boss has and notice subtleties like how some attacks leave him open or how he can mix up his moves. This is all about just going in and observing and staying alive. After some times of doing this, you can step it up. Some bosses have conditional behavior based on where the player is or what he is doing. So, you can start prodding his reactions to different situations. For example, after identifying an opening from earlier, try to take advantage of it without hitting the boss. Just walk in position and see if he attacks you and punishes you, or if he is actually open. Try to see how he reacts if you try to stay behind him or under him. You will be surprised how many bosses have blind spots where they struggle to hit you with anything. You will also realize that just moving a certain way or being in certain positions 
will make you avoid their attacks without dodging or blocking. Doing a few of these runs and eventually you start to get so confident that you will occasionally swing at the boss for no other reason that you know you can. And before you even know it, you might end up killing him without trying. This is undoubtedly the most powerful tool in your arsenal, but it also requires that you apply many things I have detailed previously in this video. I would like you to carefully take time to apply each point to your gameplay. I also highly encourage you to come back to this video after getting your hands dirty with the game. The hindsight will help you get a better understanding and perspective of each point, as you will find yourself directly connecting them to situations that have happened to you. Of course, your internalizing of all of this is going to be progressive, and the harder the wall you face, the more you will be tested on how well you can stick to these guidelines. These walls are also the best way, if not the only way, the guidelines are truly going to be ingrained in you. And I can promise you that if you follow them, the Soulsborne games, being these oppressively difficult games, will be nothing but a vague memory. And there you have it. These are the distilled learnings I and others have eventually acquired over thousands of hours of playing the Souls games. You will notice that the path to getting good is not necessarily the easiest one to the end of the game, but is the most permanent in making you better overall and comfortable in the plethora of situations you could find yourself in throughout the dozens of Souls-like games. At the end of the day, if you have picked up anything from this guide that will help you out, that would be amazing. Thank you so much everyone who made it this far in the video. I hope everyone has a magical time with Elden Ring. The game is finally here, and it feels unreal. You can catch me streaming over on Twitch, so come around and hang out, or if you'd like to ask me a question directly live. I also would like to hear from you. So if you have anything to express, don't forget to leave a comment. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like to help with the algorithm and share it with anyone it could help. If you want more content from me, don't forget to subscribe. I have a few ideas of videos coming, one of them being a complete combat guide for Elden Ring. Goodbye.